The United States is here. Great Britain, India, Japan, Canada, France, Australia, Germany. 26 nations all together. Each will introduce the latest naval technology in their arsenals. Twenty-two thousand men and women will be tested over the coming months across a vast expanse of ocean covering thousands of square miles. The command center and flagship of the operation is the nuclear-powered supercarrier. A model of modern engineering. The operation is called Rim of the Pacific, the world's largest and most complex naval exercise. It will be as close to actual warfare as is peacefully possible. We began to appear nearly 5,000 years ago in the Mediterranean Sea. They were the largest and most glorious moving objects known to mankind. Powered by oars, their tactics were simple. They rammed and sank enemy ships. Soldiers on board carried only bows, arrows, and spears, yet great battles ensued. Raging for weeks, there was often the loss of hundreds of ships and thousands of men. For centuries to come, navies with the best trained crews, the bravest commanders, and the mightiest warships would rule the world. The modern supercarrier remains at sea for months at a time and is home for over 5,000 personnel. A virtual city at sea. All right, Tom, let's go. Uh, let's go 360. The captain is from an elite group that has over 25 years of naval aviation experience. Hey, so just, just let the, the helos know territorial waters are only uh, eight miles to the east. Yep, thanks. Okay. Off my rudder, 92 fixed wing aircraft and helicopters are ready for a month of intense flight hops as demanding as combat itself. Those wearing green shirts maintain airframes and engines. Red shirts are responsible for ammo and weapons. Really strong, you know, U.S. sailor that you want to represent yourself as, and I think we all use them as role models today. Purple shirts or grapes fuel the aircraft. Air crew now manning up for the event seven case three launch case three recovery. The temperature at sixty eight degrees, the altimeter two nine nine six, and the density altitude nine hundred forty feet. On the fog walk. Crews are looking for anything that might get sucked into an engine as the aircraft take off. Pilots have been killed by almost invisible nuts and bolts. Nuclear power carriers have almost unlimited range, like sailing ships of the past. 
Two centuries ago, sail-powered galleons with a hundred guns emerged on the high seas to fight at battles like Trafalgar. The French and Spanish were the superior force. Led by Napoleon, they were thought to be invincible. But the British commander, Horatio Nelson, had innovative tactics and was more aggressive. Cannonballs fired at close range inflicted a terrible carnage. Nearly 8,000 sailors were killed on both sides. The French and Spanish lost 22 ships. The British lost none. Nelson, though he was killed, became a legend along with his flagship victory. From the triumph at Trafalgar grew a worldwide British Empire that would last another century. Control of the high seas requires a mastery of the most advanced possible technology. Yeah. Deep in the heart of the ship sit two uranium-powered nuclear reactors. Essentially miniature suns, these radioactive furnaces boil water to create high-pressure steam that spins giant turbines. The carrier's eight electric generators could easily power a city of 100,000 people. Using massive reduction gearboxes, the turbines also turn four mammoth propeller shafts that drive the ship at around 35 knots. Its top speed remains highly classified. With regular maintenance, they can run continuously without refueling for 20 years. physically fit are all critical among the crew of a smooth running ship. Every one of the 5,212 personnel is integral in the success of the operation. No tiny detail is left to chance. position and secure the aircraft on the deck, making sure they are presented for launch in the right order. Training has been continuous since the very first carriers were launched more than a century ago. The battle group commander is responsible for the coordination of all 26 nations during the exercise. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we had ships from... Patience, communication, and diplomacy were not the hallmarks of legendary admirals. But in an increasingly complex and lethal world, they are critical. And they want to help and give their navies a chance to shine. The carrier as the flagship is responsible for getting 55 vessels from all over the world organized and sailing together in reasonable order. Yeah, 
This kind of international cooperation was inconceivable even a hundred years ago. By the beginning of the 20th century, the giant guns of dreadnoughts or battleships would dwarf the cannons of Trafalgar. As the First World War began, Britain had a significant edge over Germany in both ships and guns and did not expect to be challenged. But in June of 1916, 250 British and German ships engaged off the coast of Jutland in the North Sea. It would come to be known as the greatest battleship duel of all time. 14 British and 11 German ships were sunk. 8,500 young men were killed. The age of the battleship had come to an end in less than two hours of fighting. Modern defense systems are evolving at an accelerating pace. Questioning the wisdom of expensive new procurement, challenging the status quo. The goal of RIMPAC is, in part, to test and integrate advances in weapons technology. It gives crews a chance to perfect their skills under battle-like conditions. The operation of an aircraft carrier is in itself nearly as dangerous as actual combat, and everyone on board is well aware of that. Modern fighter aircraft, like the F-18 Super Hornet, can walk on and intercept enemy aircraft long before visual contact. Yet they still carry machine guns that look like they might belong on a World War I biplane. Even in an age of advanced missiles, pilots must still prepare for the unlikely prospect of an old-fashioned dogfight. Launching a 37,000-pound F-18 Super Hornet off a carrier may look simple, but bad weather, enemy fire, and accidents all contribute to very real danger. After a century of trial and error, one launch system has proved robust and reliable. Below deck are tanks of high-pressure steam from the nuclear-powered boilers. They provide explosive expansion power to pistons sitting in 300-foot-long tubes. Like shells waiting in the barrel of a gun. Once released, the power of the piston can launch an aircraft with the force of four Gs, catapulting the plane from zero to 160 miles an hour in just three seconds. Yeah. 
Every role on board is critical to the exquisite ballet of launch and recovery. As exciting as the steam-powered catapult launch is for the fighter pilot, a safe landing is even better. Oh. An aircraft's tail hook must snag one of four resting cables. This braided wire weaves 900 feet through the carrier, down to an arrestor engine. As the momentum of the plane pulls on the cable, a huge piston forces hydraulic fluid in one tank against air in another, compressing the air up to 400 pounds per square inch, stopping the aircraft and pilot in just two seconds. The company embrace of the arresting cable is regarded as among the most euphoric experiences in all of aviation. Japanese on the starboard, Normandy in front, that looks pretty good. All right, and the submarines. Who can find the submarines? Always, always the submarines. The great strength of the submarine is its stealth. Annoying to its friends, lethal to its enemies. One more submarine to find. Also at RIMPAC is the new Virginia-class submarine. It is 377 feet long and 34 feet wide. Speed can exceed 25 knots and potentially over 30. On board, crew number 120 enlisted men and women and 14 officers. Range 410 yards. The nuclear propulsion system produces 40,000 horsepower. A modern nuclear sub could stay underwater almost indefinitely, like an aircraft carrier limited only by its onboard supply of food. It makes its own fresh water for drinking and showers. I, I understand what you're saying, but we cannot risk attacking a, uh, a neutral country. They are capable of launching Mark 48 torpedoes, tactical tomahawks, harpoon missiles, and the new advanced mobile mine. More than a thousand feet of water provides a stealthy layer of protection for the submarine as it defends the carrier and other surface ships above. Like great weapons of the past, navies simply cannot afford to lose battles fought in earnest. Despite the horrendous losses suffered by the Germans and British at Jutland, battleships reappeared in the Second World War, much bigger and far more lethal. Enchanted with the powerful symbolism of big guns, 
Adolf Hitler invested heavily in battleships, including the Tirpitz and Bismarck. The German ships were superbly built and manned. They were thought to be invincible, like the Nazis themselves. The Bismarck's rudder was damaged by light aircraft. The crippled ship was then pounded by 2,800 shells from British warships before being scuttled by the German crew. 2,100 German sailors died. As the age of the battleship was coming to a close, that of the aircraft carrier was just beginning. Each rim pack features emerging advanced technology, like the F-35, a fifth generation strike fighter. Since World War II, increasingly powerful radar has been used to detect inbound enemy aircraft. With growing sophistication, modern radar has been used to lock onto enemy planes and shoot them down with guided missiles fired over the horizon beyond visual range. Much of the new fighter's advancements focus on hiding from radar with a technology called stealth. The F-35 has multiple layers of skin coating that absorb radar waves, preventing them from bouncing back to enemy radar screens. Engine intake and exhaust are specially designed to deflect and mask the jet's thermal signature, avoiding detection from heat-seeking missiles. It can carry more than 15,000 pounds of weapons externally, or more than 5,000 pounds internally, dramatically improving the F-35's stealth profile. 99-83 The U.S. Marine variant, the F-35B, has more than 40,000 pounds of thrust, giving pilots more raw power than any other fighter engine in history. Designed for carrier operations, it has larger wings with tips that fold and tougher landing gear for catapult launches and carrier arrest routes. The helmet displays all pertinent information, no matter where the pilot is looking. The aircraft's distributed aperture system uses six electro-optical sensors, giving the pilot an unprecedented 360 degrees of situational awareness. Level 250, mark your bomb. 
the pilot can actually look through the aircraft itself. All the key information the pilot needs is projected onto the helmet's visor, allowing for instant coordinated response. The missile warning system sees subtle heat differences across the landscape. The new strike fighter shares data seamlessly with other F-35s, but also with allied aircraft and commanders on water or land. Computer technology is so sophisticated, it can identify types of planes and nationality, and recommend to the pilot suggested weapons to deploy. That sensors can even spot a whale, or more importantly, a submarine on the surface. There is lighting seven three tally target. When submarines first appeared in the theater of war, British admirals considered them unethical, the weapons of cowards who refused to fight on the surface like real men. The stealthy, high-tech German submarine was regarded by some as the battleship of the future. In the early years of World War II, they had a lethal advantage in the North Atlantic. Attacking and sinking thousands of defenseless cargo ships, strangling the lifeline of the Allied war effort. In desperation, Hundreds of small corvettes were hurriedly built to defend the convoys. Based on a fishing boat, they were cheap and simple. Their crews were amateurs and most often teenagers. They had the smallest guns in the Navy. Yet day and night they fought the terrible cruelty of submarine warfare, struggling to save the lives of merchant seamen. Gradually, these and other tiny escort ships of the Canadian, British, and American navies clawed back the German advantage, sinking 700 submarines and winning the largest naval battle in human history. Early submarines were plagued by lack of situational awareness. Like blind mice in a cave, they knew little of what lay around them. The Virginia class's sophisticated electronic periscope and sensors allow crew members access to vital information. They know exactly where they are, and even more importantly, they know the whereabouts of both friend and foe. Maritime interdiction, gunnery, missile testing, anti-submarine, mine clearance, air defense, Amphibious landing. All demand coordinated planning and much trial and error. Advances in weapons systems seek to integrate international navies, armies, and air forces into unified fighting units. Advanced electronic warfare systems can identify in detail 
friend from foe, jam enemy assets, and provide an electronic shield to cloak threaten friendly forces. was a gun battle one moment can in the blink of an eye become a battle for survival of another kind. For thousands of years, sailors have feared violent seas as much as the enemy. What really I highlights is the very complicated missions navies are asked to perform in the modern world. Terrorism, piracy, earthquakes, fires, hurricanes, humanitarian disasters. Services that once jealously competed increasingly work together. Guards, Air Forces, Coast Guards, Marines. 